All right, we're going to focus a little bit on the graphic novels today down on the bottom shelf down here. And if you see right down there, you've got Grant Morrison's Earth One, Volume One, Wonder Woman. I uh, haven't read that one, but I'm sure it's really good. Highly recommend that one. All the Earth One stuff's really great. I own all those except the Green Lanterns. And if you keep panning along here, you will see uh, Superman, Mark, Mark Miller Superman, uh, which he had a uh, failed show come on Netflix this year called Jupiter's Legacy. I'm kind of sad about that because yeah. it was pretty good, and we got one season, and it kind of ended. Yeah, it was a great show. And, and beside that is the um, volume one of Brian Michael Bendis' takeover on Superman. Um, that was a really good run. If you're interested in seeing that and seeing what he did there, um, that's the beginning of that run. Nice. So keep working our way down. You see Suicide Squad, Raven. I think our camera person back there likes Raven a lot. Um, we also have Nightwing. This is Kyle Higgins right on Nightwing. That's volume four. Um, he's a great writer, but I really love what they're doing with Nightwing right now. Um, Tom Taylor is just a phenomenal writer, and Nightwing's story is really good. And we got Tom King's run on Mr. Miracle down there. That was a mini, so if you pick that up, you've got the entire series there. No need to go look for various volumes. That's all in one. All right. All right. And coming on down, we've got Mark Wade's run on The Flash. Um, Mark Wade's a really good writer. I'm re what are we reading right now that he's writing uh, Batman, uh, Superman, World's yes. Finest? He's actually writing that right now, so that one's really good. Um, one that me and Josh both have read uh, right down here, Deceased at Dead Planet, uh, goes along with the whole Deceased uh, uh, run of comics. Those are really good comics. Uh, Tom Taylor wrote those as well. And uh, really good if you want to read like an alternate story or an Elseworld story. And just kind of a uh, teaser for our next video. We're going we're gonna to highlight an uh, Elseworld story, but it's not DC. Yeah, it says... It's a Tom, Tom Taylor as well. Deceased is DC Zombies is what you get there. Dead Planet's actually the second one. And coming up this summer, we've got Volume 3 of Deceased coming out. So if you're interested in that, hop on the graphics for that one. Get all caught up and ready for the new one to start. Right. And if you keep coming down, you get Volume 9 of Batman. This was still part of uh, Tom King's run before um, James Tenyon uh, took over. Um, we're getting pretty close with that one to catching up to where we are now. So that's all of the Mar I mean the DC um, graphic novels. Uh, but if you look right over here on this middle rack, you're going to see um, Neil Gaiman's Sandman, book one, two, three, and four. Wow, that's a complete set just about right there. Um, this is getting ready to be a Netflix series, so if you want to catch up, this will be a good way to catch up. Yeah, there's a lot of great pictures coming out for that, images of the characters. Um, I'm kind of excited for that one. Gaiman is a great writer. He creates a lot of really interesting stories, so that should be really interesting to watch. Oh, Josh, I just got super excited because if you look down at the bottom shelf, we have Adora in the distance. Uh, this book was written by none other than Mark Bernardin of the uh, Fat Man Beyond fame. Uh, this book was written about his child who has um, autism. And so it kind of uh, tells the story in a fantasy form of how his child deals with the autism. It's a really good book. I started reading it on Amazon Plus, but I think it's really cool to be able to have a physical copy. Um, Mark's a great writer. He works on a lot of good stuff. Um, he actually worked on season two. He was executive producer of season two of Picard. So, yes, um, we got Sweet Tooth down there, which we just had on Netflix as well. That was a really good show. Uh, waiting for maybe a season two on that. And yeah, there is a season two coming. Okay. Yeah, um, also on the on the middle rack, I want to highlight this one: the Jeff Johns Gary Frank Geiger has been a really cool book. I actually have the floppies of that one. Um, that's the collected edition. Um, it's about a man who was stuck outside of a um, fallout shelter when the bomb was dropped. Um, the world is in a post-apocalyptic state, and he is a nuclear man. He, like, glows. He's pretty cool in that story. Coming on around here, we see some more graphic novels, and we see Yusagi Ojimbo, which we know from the Turtles fame, is a ninja rabbit. Uh, but I can't help but 
say look at Stranger Things and right now that's really popular because of uh, it's back on Netflix. Uh, I've seen the first two of the new season. It seems to be really good as it always is. The Duffer Brothers don't disappoint at all. Yeah, no spoilers. I haven't had time to watch it yet. You're still on season three. Yeah, I'm behind. He's a little slow. Yeah. <laughs> on this side, of course, we got The Boys. Um, very popular show on Prime Video. If you ever wanted to see what it would be like if... Uh, most of your superheroes were bad, what they would do with their powers, so there you go. Um, also right down here, I talked about it earlier, here's Mont Miller's uh, Jupiter's Legacy Volume 1, which they had made a show out of. And if you look on the bottom shelf down there, you see Volume 1 of Keanu Reeves' comic, uh, The Murder. Yes. Really good book. Um, let's round the corner right here and see what we got on this side. Oh, lots of good stuff. Of course, it's... My brain goes right to the Star Wars, but up top here we've got some really good books. We've got Invincible, uh, The Invincible Universe. Uh, Invincible is also a prime video show that we catch every once in a while. Animated, and, really great show. Right, yeah. right, just not for kiddies. It's not for kids at all. Yeah, don't let no. your kids watch this. we got King Spawn Volume 1. Uh, we also have a Lady Death back here. Of course, all the Star Wars stuff. We've got a lot of books here that have come out over the recent years. Dark Plagueis is a really good book. I actually read that one. Um, coming on down, we got The Saga, number seven. we got a Doctor Who down here as well. And we've got uh, Time Before Time, uh, volume number one. Um, so that's what we got there. And if you look right here, we have a rack with some... Uh, anime and some other books which are kind of like anime so you know. some younger fare too some of the the more teen graphic novels like the marvel adventures yeah um the batman riddler book that was there um all of these are, are geared more towards the younger kids so if your kids are into this and, and want to find out a little bit more this is a good spot to check out so also look right here you got Tales from Vader's Castle. Even though I'm not a child, um, I would probably still enjoy this because uh, it's Star Wars. And who doesn't exactly. love Star Wars? Exactly. All right. Let's go look at the new release uh, shelf today and see what we got up there. It, it, is a, it is the first, but it's the fifth week for comics, so it's a little sparse this week. This is generally when you get your ang annuals. Um, I know that you've got Justice League Road to Dark Crisis number one that has just hit with two alternate covers there. Um, and then you've got Batman Annual 2002, a couple of different covers as well. Which I'll be picking that one up today. Um, your Shadow War Omega. Shadow War has come to an end. Yes. I am almost done reading that. I've got to read War Zone and uh, Deathstroke and Robin, and then I'll read Omega. And then we'll know uh, if it was Deathstroke that really killed Raja Ghoul or not. Yeah, and um, one of your older um, Vertigo books, which is now just a DC Black Label book, is Fables by DC. And they've started that series back up. We've got issue 151 here. It's a um, fantasy world with characters like Robin Hood and Snow White, all your Fable characters, and it makes for an interesting read. Josh, right there beside you, you got Scorched. Uh, that's a Todd McFarlane book of Spawn fame. Um, that would be issue number six. The uh, yes. cover, cover looks pretty interesting. And right yes. beside that, you also have Stranger Things, number three of four. So uh, I don't know. Let me hold that up for you so you can see. Obviously, we see the Demogorgon up there. But we also have another uh, cover here that we see. And... Uh, Again, if you're not watching it, it is on Netflix, and uh, we're on to a new season. Uh, just a little bit farther down, down here, we have the car, uh, the uh, the Marvel uh, news section here. We've got Carnage number three. This is written by V, as we can see. Um, love the cover. Really cool. Carnage is always a good cover. Uh, Ghost Rider number three um, is out. Uh, we're looking at some uh, multiple covers here. I'll kind of hold those up so you can see them. Uh, they look pretty cool, as well as, of course, we have Dar um, Star Wars stuff. We've got Darth Vader number 23. Wow, we're already on the 23rd issue of this run of Star Wars. We also have Bounty Hunters number 23, and we've got a couple of different covers for that one as well. So we got choices there. 
Um, these have been really good. I have not read these two books, but I read the one, uh, the tie-ins for the uh, War of the Bounty Hunters. Then right up here, we got X-Men 92, House of 92. Uh, this is issue number two. It's a lot of twos in 92, yes. House of 92. Number two, um, again, we're looking at the X-Men from the cartoon that came out. Um, we have Philip Kennedy Johnson's latest Alien uh, cover here. We see the face huggers up there, so we know what's going on there. Um, Alien's really good. King Conan. Command Conan's been around a long time. Uh, uh, Jason Aaron is actually writing Conan right now, and this is issue number five. And I, I think that's getting ready to come to an end, because if I recall, Conan has... Uh, rights have transferred over to another comic company, so Marvel is getting ready to lose those. And uh, the last thing we have up here, and then we're going to go look at the Marvel uh, graphic novels. We have Miles Morales Spider-Man number 38. And it looks like we're starting a run called Empire of the Spider. Um, I see some familiar and not so familiar characters up there. So um, if you like Spider-Man, um, I like all Spider-Man, so that would be a good one. Um, as we're turning around, if you want to look right here, we have a lot of the um, graphic novels. And a little bit more, you know, hardcover and a little bit better. Right up top here, we have Invincible, the compendium number one. I mean, and look at how thick this thing is. I mean, you could take somebody out. That's like an Atlanta, Georgia phone book right there, man. It's <laughs> ridiculous. But imagine. I mean, what's that like? Um, it's got to be close to 100 issues. Yeah, and it's probably like what, 30 minutes worth of reading to get to the end for some of those? <laughs> nah, no, I mean, that's really cool. Also, you have a Batman box set, and I mean, Batman is super popular right now, but if you look, this one actually contains um, the long Halloween, Batman Year One, and uh, Batman Ego, actually. And those books are kind of what they used as the basis for the new Batman film, so if you're interested in reading those, kind of get a backstory. Um... We got Jeff John's Three Jokers down here. This was came out as a three separate books. Um, read those. They came out what last summer? Last summer. Last yes. summer. They're collected now, and they are um, really good. There, um, there are literally three Jokers, three different Jokers in that story that you meet. It's a an interesting take on the Joker, and really does a great job of bridging the gap between some of those classic Batman stories. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and that can't leave out Static down here, because Milestone has returned, and that's awesome. So we actually get Static Season 1, and I think it's great that Milestone is back, they do some great work, and it, it's good to have them back doing comics. Yes. So let's... Um, the last one I want to highlight here is All-Star Superman, oh, which was one Superman. of the greatest Superman stories of all time. Um, it's one of those you can pick up and read on its own. You don't need any backstory on it. You don't need to have read like a 20 years worth of comics. It's just a really great Superman story by Grant Morrison. Nice. nice. All right, right over here on the wall, we're going to go over and take a look at some of the... Um, the uh, Graphic novels down here again. I, for some reason, I can't say graphic novels today. Um, so if you start down here, we've got the Punisher, um, X Men, just all different ranges of X Men. And if I were reading an X Men, I would definitely recommend anything that Chris Claremont wrote. I mean, they're wonderful tales. Um, Spider Man No More. That's probably a great story. Um, We've got uh, John Romita drawing that. John it Romita, and it says Lee. i got to look at this. Is this Jim Lee? Is this Jim Lee? Are we actually? Let's see. Let's see. Let me get in there. It is actually it's a Stan Lee. Lee. Wow. We're that, that's going really classic right there. This is 1960, 66 to 67. So that's some really great classic Spider-Man right, stories. Right, and if you kind of want to read about, you know, the beginning... And, you know, because we all know Stan Lee created Spider-Man, so that would be a really cool one to have there. Um, keep going. Obviously, Spider-Man's really popular, and we go on with those. Um, we just had a run of called Spider-Man. It was called Beyond. It just ended, and you could see uh, Volume 4 there um, with the amazing Spider-Man. We also have uh, Spider-Gwen has gotten super popular. Again, we got the Jane Foster down here. Uh, Captain Marvel. And if you go all the way to the end there, you'll see Fantastic Four kind of hiding yes. in the corner there. And uh, if you were watching like last summer when we got when we got the Black Widow movie, 
you've got a taskmaster down there for the main villain. Um, I think you'll find that he's a little bit different than he was in the film. So if you want a little more history on that character, that would be a good read. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, also, there's a Daredevil right down there. Um, Chip, Chip Zdarsky, again, I can't talk about him enough. He's a great writer, and he got a run on Daredevil, and they say it's one of the best runs on Daredevil they've ever had. So. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we're back outside the shop again, showing what we picked up today. Um, kind of a light week this week, so we really don't have a whole lot. Um, I picked up a uh, issue. Scott Snyder. This is a limited edition dynamic forces uh, and it actually comes with a certificate of authenticity. Uh, so there was only 2,000 copies of this cover made. So that's pretty cool. I've got one that's kind of exclusive. Also, like Josh said earlier, um, the, the it's annual time. So this is the Batman 2022 annual. And I think I read in my Batman that there's a story in here that kind of tells how Ghostmaker is now the leader of Batman Incorporated. So that should be a pretty good read. And my last pickup was called Shadow War Zone, which if you've been watching our channel, you know that I've talked about the Shadow War with Batman and Deathstroke and the League of Assassins. And the reason why I grabbed this one, not only is because it's part of the Shadow War thing, but also this is actually a tribute to um, an old X-Men comic, and it just reached out and grabbed me, and it looked really good. So uh, those are my three. Josh, what did you get this week? Yeah, that's a complete Days of Future Past cover right there. That's pretty cool. Um, mine was fairly light this week, too. I got Justice League Rose and Dark Crisis, number one. Um, I'm excited for that one. Can't wait to get into that series. Um, the Action Comics Annual. This one is supposed to give us an origin story for Mongol. This is going back into that War World um, story that they've been doing. Um, Firepower number 21 by Robert Kirkman of The Walking Dead fame. Um, DC Connect, which is your latest um, booklet to tell you what's coming out. This is the August books that are coming out in that. I'll be going through that looking to see what I'll be getting. And then I picked up a trade this week. I told you guys I've been collecting the Crisis books. Well, I got Infinite Crisis today, so that's another one added to my Crisis series that I'll be looking at and making my way through. All right, guys. Keep shopping those local shops. Keep coming. Keep them in business, guys. Yeah, and it's great books. If you're, sorry, if you're here in New Bern, come check out uh, Carolina Comics and more. Um, if you're kind of familiar with the New Bern area, it's right on Martin Luther King Boulevard. Um, behind the Speedway, close to the high school. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking where I get my comics, so I kind of wanted to give them some idea. So if you're heading out of town, like you're going to Jacksonville, and you see the Speedway, just kind of give a pull on and uh, come on in and check out the comics and uh, happy reading to all of you this week and uh, join us Saturday um, as we film a new video about what we've been reading this week and until we see you then we will see you at the shop, shop.